As I said in the previous video, since it's nearing the end of the year, I thought I would do a final clock collection update. Just to get you up to speed before the new year rolls over. Because I'm not going to be getting any more clocks until then. So to start with the new ones that haven't been covered in a collection video, let's begin with this Tezuka Popo Cuckoo Clock, or Popo as the Japanese would pronounce it. It is a Popo OH-25, and it has a Sankyo music box in it, also made in Japan, that plays Erize no Tameni, which is for Elise. Music Man functions all good. These hands are not original. I had to find replacement hands because all of them had broken off when I got the clock. There's also some woodworking repairs that need to be done to this clock, but overall, it's pretty nice. I also had to replace the bellows and get new pins for the doors. Here you can see the dial. It says Tezuka Clock Company. Made in Japan down there. Here's another one you haven't seen. This is my Junghans hanger clock. It's very similar in principle to a rope clock, but instead of hanging from a rope, it hangs from a brass clip. So I shall let you hear how this sounds. It has a very similar chime rod assembly to a loudspeaker, but I believe this specific one is called a membrane gong. This Junghans right here is my free swinger, or a uh, wag on the wall, as I prefer to call it. It's a very mid-century modern design, and it's got wood grain, brushed aluminum chapter ring. I think the hands are also brushed aluminum. This clock has a silencer, it's right there. I'm going to use it to demonstrate the sound. There is the famous loudspeaker, so I will let you hear it now. This is another new clock I got. This is a Hamilton Wheatland with a Hermley 340-020. I got this in a clock trade with my friend Nicholas. I traded my Bulova Atomat bracket clock for it. And this is a very, very elegant piece. This is my Kern anniversary clock. It's a 400-day clock. Very typical 400-day movement. It has a Vienna deadbeat escapement. Anniversary clocks are also called torsion pendulum clocks because that's what that carousel is right there. That is a torsion pendulum. You can see the clock operates on the rotation of the carousel. It's ticking very, very slowly. That's how these torsion pendulum clocks work. I really like the diamond-shaped dial. The last new clock I've gotten is this Minecronta. It's a 70s vacuum fluorescent display alarm clock. I've opened it up because it needed a little bit of work, and I can confirm that that is a vacuum fluorescent display. It is not just an LED display. The camera makes it look a lot more blue than it is in real life, but it is very green in person. Okay, and that pretty much just leaves all the stuff that you've already seen, but I'll go over it anyway for possible new viewers. This clock right here is a Japanese clone of an American long drop. The text on the dial that says Regulator A is a stolen term from, I believe, the Ansonia Clock Company. Another giveaway that it's Japanese or Asian is this very strange trademark. That's a trademark for the Hearth Clock Company of Japan. I always like to joke that they got heart and hearth confused because those are very similar words, but heart is something that beats in your chest and hearth is like a fireplace so there's a bit of a difference there this is my Seiko Corona Melodia alarm clock it plays Swan Lake on a Sankyo music box and I'll let you hear it The 
the style here. Blue is on demand, red is off, and green is for the alarm. So that red hand, whenever it reaches the desired hour, it'll play the music. This is meant to be an alarm clock, but as I always say, I would be sent back to sleep. This is my Polaris Chinese wall clock. It goes for 31 days, and it has a very typical mass-produced Chinese time and strike movement in it. There's the Polaris logo. The Chinese characters for Polaris are Beiji Xing. Next up, we have little alarm clocks. This is my West Clocks travel bin made in America. It has a very uh, cost reduced movement in it. Steel plated, riveted, unserviceable, and it barely keeps time. It's uh, behind by five minutes as we speak, actually. This is my Linden travel alarm with a 24 hour dial. It has a typical 12 hour dial for the minute hand and the hour hand. They didn't replace the motion work, but it does have another ring for 24 hours that shows all the times around the world. Right now my time zone is Chicago and it's almost 1 p.m. so that's 12.56 or so, almost 1300 hours. So Chicago's appropriately very close to 13 on this 24 hour dial. So then we can see the times all around the world. Like in Paris, it's very close to 8 o'clock in the evening or 20. And in Beirut, 2100 hours. Very useful for travelers. Sticking with alarm clocks, this is my Chinese 1960s, 1970s 5 Rams. It was made in China, of course, it says there. And it has a very cool insignia the 5 Rams characters there for five rams is Wu Yang. Next to it we have my West Clocks travel alarm which is running too fast. I reset it to the time anyway. Alright and moving on from the alarm clocks this is my Howard Miller Shelburne or popular known as just the Howard Miller regulator. I believe this model was made by Howard Miller from the 1980s to the early 2000s and then production ceased. So this is a very nice vintage example of a clock. It's in the style of a short drop or a railway clock or a schoolhouse clock. There's various different names for this style. I like short drop but this is in more of a between a long drop and a short drop. So, it's a little hard to say. I'll just call it a schoolhouse clock. This one, a specific one. It has a Hermley 341-020 in it. The one in the Hermley model number means that it's pendulum driven. And it plays the Westminster Chimes. This is my Seth Thomas short drop. It's uh, an actual true short drop, not just like the Howard Miller. This one is made fully in America. This clock strikes on a coiled gong every 30 minutes and it has a Seth Thomas 89 movement in it. This is my New Haven short drop. It's in a more art deco fashion with the geometrical numerals and it's a time only clock. It's a minute or so slow but whatever. It's much more octagonal than the other Seth Thomas. Mo moving on, this is my Semka Mauta carriage clock. That was it striking just now. It has a Mauta W400 movement in it. W-400, to be more precise. Runs for eight days. Not a very good timekeeper, but here we are. If you wind it up every day, it'll keep time. Just not letting it unwind for eight days is more optimal. Below it is another Mauta, more specifically a Friedrich Mauta Schwenningen. It's much earlier than this Mauta. The Mauta above it is a mid-century modern style, and this one is a more 20s era. It's a box clock, but it's a very, very small box clock. It's a mini box clock. My German friend says it's not that impressive. It wouldn't be that impressive to hang in your German home because the Germans liked to impress with their furniture. But who didn't back then? I think it's cute, and it plays Bim Bam. This is my Elgin 8-day drop dial clock. 
That's what I prefer to call it because there's a part of the dial that sort of drops down. These are my friends. It has a very oddly serial numbered Harmley in it. A 351-030, never heard of that. This particular movement is also not dated. It's just badged for Elgin. It plays the Westminster Chimes. It looks like it's of 70s construction, but a very typical Hermley construction from the 70s would have plastic for the motion work and the snail. This does not have that, so it could be earlier than the 70s. It could be from the 60s. This is my Helmut Kamarar passive striking cuckoo clock. It cuckoos every 15 minutes, rather than counting the hour and announcing the half hour. I'll show you, because it's a little bit unusual. See? And yeah, pretty neat. Oops, a little too far. This is my novelty clock wall. That is a Lux Pendulette. Right below it is a J. Angsler Owl novelty clock, and right below it is an unmarked German novelty clock. All of them are mechanical, though. This one is likely the oldest. It was made in Waterbury, Connecticut. Not by Waterbury, but by Lux. Lux made a lot of novelty clocks with balance wheel movements as well as little pendulettes like this. This is the centerpiece of my collection, likely. This is my Trend Triple Chime wall clock. Trend is a division of Sly, so Sly made this clock in all reality. The clock likes to boast it was made in the USA. I always say this, it was not. The case was made in the USA, yes, but the movement is German. I don't know why they couldn't have just put like USA and German, but whatever. It has a variant of a Hermley 1051-020 movement in it. 1051-020 or 1051-030, I can't remember. This is my fully American Seth Thomas column clock. This clock falls under the category of Ogie clocks, or OG clocks, however you wish to pronounce it. I think Ogie is actually correct, but nonetheless. There is a very nice painting on the door that says... E Pluribus Unum, and it depicts an eagle with a United States flag and a United States shield. Very patriotic. The dial is a replacement dial. This came from a clock shop that restored this clock. The movement is fully rebushed. Very nice. Unusually, this clock also has an alarm mechanism. This clock was likely made in the late 1800s by Seth Thomas. Now this was also likely made in the late 1800s. This is my William L. Gilbert kitchen clock. I got this kitchen clock at a garage sale that the clock shop was having. They don't sell a lot of 30 hour clocks. This is a 30 hour clock and it runs very, very nice. Keeps very good time for a 30 hour clock. And most unusually, it strikes on a bell. I haven't seen a lot of gingerbread clocks, kitchen clocks, what have you, strike on a bell. The pendulum looks like a replacement. There's also very nice paintings on the door of, I believe those are great blue herons in a type of lake or garden scene with loads of flowers and leaves. It's very nice. And the glass is still mildly transparent so you can see the pendulum swinging. Very nice. Hi, Freddy. Moving to the smaller clocks, this is a Sessions Beehive mantle clock. It was likely made in the early 1900s, I guess 1910, but I don't know if that's truly accurate. It strikes on a coil gong and a bell like a typical early American clock. Well, early. Uh, early 1900s, I should specify. I've done a little bit of work on this one. For the longest time, it hasn't had a leather-tipped hammer, and unfortunately, because Sessions decided to go cheap, they riveted on the hammer. I really could have done this better, but you know, just bear with me. I cut off that riveted on hammer and I filed out a bigger hole in a Hermley chime hammer and I just slipped the chime hammer for the Hermley movement onto this and it sounds much, much nicer. And it's in secure place. It hasn't fallen off. It doesn't look like the most beautiful job, but it does get the job done. This is my 1973 WH Tradition mantle clock. 
It has a 1050-020 movement in it that plays Westminster, Whittington, and St. Michael. The movement is badly worn. It needs a few bushings, but it still runs. I just had to get it a new floating balance off of an old Hermley movement. I particularly like the, the key of these chime rods. I really enjoy the sound of this clock, and I was really happy I could get it working again back in my collection for the longest time. It wasn't functioning, and I'm glad I could revive it, because I missed it. This is my Waterbury Timbre Mantle Clock. It strikes on a single chime rod, so a little underwhelming, but the movement is very interesting. It seems to be French-inspired. This whole clock seems to be French-inspired. The glass is very lightly beveled. Also, both winding arbors wind counterclockwise. Also, this clock has rack and snail striking. The rack and the snail are in the back. The movement is patented 1898 by the Waterbury Clock Company. Here's another one I forgot to cover earlier. This is my, well, marked but unknown Japanese long drop. It's my second Japanese long drop. This thing is a horrific timekeeper, but it's pretty cool. It has the regulator uh, paint on the glass, very typical. Not much else to say about it. The finish is really nice, except for this missing part on the door and how the door gets all crooked like this. There's nothing I can do about that, except remove the entire door, which I don't want to do. Moving on to something much nicer and more respectable, this is my Junghans drop dial, and it plays Westminster chimes. It has a very typical Junghans movement in it that does Westminster chimes. You see a lot of them in HAC clocks as well. That was the clock just going, that first one. The other one you heard was this guy. The movement was quite problematic at first because they chose a solution for the chime lever activation that required the use of a spring with a lot of tension on it to properly activate it. Rather than going with something simple like how Hermley has a uh, just a gravity lever, they felt the need to make this one spring-loaded. So I had to fumble around with that spring a bunch until it finally stopped jamming up. The spring is pretty deformed, but I mean, it's still going. So I just hope the spring will last. This is my oldest cuckoo clock. This is an unmarked, probably Regula cuckoo clock. I think the bird is actually wooden. It's hard for me to tell though. I think that might be wood, but it kind of also looks like plastic. It's really hard to tell. Oh, now it's stuck. There we go. It's very, very, very tiny. Look at my hand. I do not have the biggest hands in the world. I am a midget. This clock with these big golden weights that you're seeing, well, gold brass, is my AMS wag on the wall. It has a Regula movement in it, one that likely came from SBS Fine Technique, which manufacture Regula movements. I think Regula is just the name they go under in the Black Forest specifically for the cuckoo clocks. This one doesn't have a typical Regula backplate. This one has a more Hermley style dotted backplate, if you understand what I'm saying, the finish. The clock strikes on a bell. Also, something worth noting, my room is very, very small in comparison to other rooms. My room is six foot three, six foot four. I don't know what that is in metric. I think that's like 190, 193 centimeters tall. And these weights, uh, no matter how high I'm gonna hang it here, will always not make it for eight days. It's supposed to be an eight day clock, but it will never make it for eight days. So I always have to wind it up a couple days after I wind it up on winding day, which is Friday at midnight, pretty much. Which means Friday, 12 a.m. I'm a little bit crazy. This is my Seiko 30-day wall clock. Two of them, actually. These two share very, very similar movements. One just has winding power meter, and the other does not. One also has a shorter pendulum than the other, and one is in a very, very different style from the other. This one is more mid-century modern, 
because they really, really liked their chromium, as they called it back then. Chrome pendulum, chrome dial, chrome hands, chrome numerals. Yeah. And then this clock is much more bland. Just black numerals, white face, chrome pendulum. I don't know what you would even call this finish. It's a dark wood finish. It's missing pieces, but this clock was $25, so I can't complain. This is my extremely crappy West Clocks Big Ben Style 9, and this is my Bulova alarm clock with a hygrometer and a temperature gauge. Not entirely sure how accurate those really are. It does feel like 60 degrees in here though, which is my comfort temperature. In Fahrenheit, that is, not Celsius. I'm not burning alive. I wish America would just use Celsius, but anyway, this is my likely 1930s European mantle clock. I say it's European because there's so much about this clock that's unknown. It's likely a German movement with a British case. It could be a British case. It could be a German case. I really don't know. This clock is just a mystery to me. My German friend told me this movement is a very mass-produced movement that was made during the war era for exportation to other countries or something like that. That could be what this is, but it does strike on a very nice coil gong and it sounds very lovely. This is my Chinese bracket clock. It strikes on a coil gong surprisingly and it has a movement in it that's practically identical to the one in my Polaris. It's just this one has a different chiming assembly and a different pendulum length. This is my Plymouth mantle clock. Plymouth was basically a subdivision of Seth Thomas. They made a lot of clocks with uh, the Plymouth name, but they were really just Seth Thomas clocks. It's kind of like how GM owns Chevy, but they also own GMC. It's like that kind of thing. The clock has quarter striking, so every 15 minutes, it counts the quarter on Bim Bam. So for quarter one, one set of Bim Bams. And then for quarter two, two sets of Bim Bams. Quarter three, three sets of Bim Bams. And then the rack fully drops and engages and counts whatever hour it is on one chime rod. This movement is an earlier example of one of these clocks. There are newer versions of these clocks as well. Newer as in they were made slightly later than this version. This one has a very early 89 movement. It's an 89 IL movement. It's not uh, a different kind of movement. There, there are like two different styles of movements that came in these quarter striking clocks. Different solutions from Seth Thomas. This is my 31 day Korean bracket clock. The movement is marked Daejin. And they put Parliament there at the top for some reason. I guess they just wanted to feel fancy. It has some very nice floral details though. I like the flowers. And it would strike on two chime rods, but one of them broke in shipping. So it's a boring one chime, one chime rod striker, but that's fine. And moving down here, this is my Hamilton Timbre Mantle Clock. It has a newer Hermley movement in it from 2005. It's not marked Hamilton, which is something Hamilton always did, so it makes me think this is a newer Hermley, but that's fine. I'd prefer a functioning Hermley movement. Place Westminster Chimes only. 340-020A. This is my Ingram Black Case Clock. It's not right to call these adamantine clocks because Seth Thomas is what actually patented adamantine. There's a piece of carpet there. So, I'll just call this a black case clock from now on. It has a bell for the half hour and a cathedral gong for the hour. This one was likely made in 1915 or 1925. There is a label with a date. It's just the person that wrote the date has the most sloppiest handwriting in the world and I couldn't read it. So, it's either 1915 or 1925. I like to think 1915, because that looks more appropriate. This is likely my newest cuckoo clock. It's a Schneider. I think my parents bought this brand new as an anniversary gift in 2001 or so. It has animated deer and bunny, and it has an animated cuckoo that comes out, of course. Affectionately named Jerry, so say hi to Jerry, everyone. 
Bye, Jerry. And here we have the last clock I'll be speaking about, I believe, unless I realize I missed any. But anyway, this is my Vostok submarine clock. It has a very typical Vostok insignia, Komandersky, Komandersky. Uh, my Russian pronunciation's bad, I apologize. But that basically says commander. It's a submarine emerging from the water, or submerging, whatever you want to call it. And there's birds. I like birds. That text there says Tielo Nov SSSR, which means made in USSR, so this clock was made in USSR. Has a very high caliber, very, very nice movement in it. I think it's steel plated with brass bushings and a jeweled platform lever escapement. Very, very, very nice. I need to get the platform replaced though because the balance staff is all worn out. But that just happens with age. Let's you know the clock was in use very nicely. I did forget one. This is my um, unmarked Regula German cuckoo clock it has a music box in it as well. So it's a musical cuckoo clock. It has this little band here that I believe are called the Oompa, the Oompa band. If my camera would focus, I would be really, really happy. There we go. And then the typical dancers up here at the top. Very sweet. The clock plays Somewhere My Love and Edelweiss. I forgot another one. This is my Raketa Soviet watch. It was made in the USSR. And it has 24 hour motion work. So it tells military time. Those hands actually do glow in the dark, by the way. They're just a little weak with age. And it's a manual wind movement. I think the power reserve is about 40 hours. And it has the Raketa 2628 H in it. Here it is, in fact. That H there is technically a Russian N, but it looks like an H, so everyone just calls it the Rakato 2628.H. Also, also, I forgot this one. This is my family's Waltham 31 day wall clock. We hang it in our living room because it's so big. Waltham commissioned this clock from a Korean factory. It's got a very typical Korean 31 day movement in it. Huge open mainsprings, American-inspired crutch, all that sort of stuff. And there is the big coiled gong. Sounds very, very nice. The woodworking for a Korean clock is also very outstanding. Well, that is pretty much it. There is that little novelty clock that I missed right there, but it's not a huge deal. It's a family heirloom. My mom passed it down to me after her grandpa passed it down to her. So that was my great grandpa's novelty clock that he made. You can find those kits on eBay if you're lucky. So that's it now. That's my collection as of the end of 2021. And I'll catch you later. There is a separate video where I just chime all the clocks because I know there are some people that just like that. So I will let you watch that if you want. You can view it here. So catch you later.